Batman. Pop, pop, pow! Hey, thanks for coming back to my channel this week. And this week on My Own Drum, I'm going to do my first comic book review. And the comic I'm going to review is Mad Love. Classic, iconic, and actually Frank Miller said it was the best Batman story of the decade. Now this was in the 90s, so it, that's probably very true. This is probably the best story of the decade. But that's pretty cool because it's not even technically a Batman story. Batman, of course, is in it because he's one of the villains. Wow. I just turned Batman into a villain because I like Harley Quinn so much. But I loved Batman first. Wow. That was something. Of course Batman's in it because these are Batman villains. And so I, I guess it's a Batman story. This comic book review might be a little bit different than other reviews that I will be doing. I've never done comic reviews before, but I read lots of comics, so I'm gonna review them. This one in particular, I'm kind of comparing it to the show because Mad Love is actually a show in the animated series. Fun fact, first came the comic then they adapted it to the show in Batman the Animated Series. And so the style of the comic is in the Animated Series style as well. The fun thing about this particular edition is it is the deluxe edition. So in the back of the book it includes notes, panel notes, coloring notes. There is a foreword by Paul Dini and then it just starts going into the comic here. I actually sat down with the comic and put the episode on and it was kind of fun flipping page by page and seeing what's different from the comic versus the TV show. And there are some differences. Just in general, there's a lot more dialogue in the comic. Um, there's extra Harley dialogue in here that's not in the TV show. There's extra Joker dialogue, Commissioner Gordon dialogue that's in here. There's even a couple extra scenes that are in here that are not depicted in the show. So those are some differences between the comic and the show, but I will get into some panel differences as well, which is I, I thought was kind of cool. Now before we get into the comic itself, I just want to go over the cover art, the jacket, and uh, you know what it says on the back. So on the front, of course, it says that this is the deluxe edition. This book was created by Paul Dini and Bruce Timm. The Bruce Timm had was the mastermind behind Batman the Animated Series and you know Paul Dini is amazing as well. I mean they they gave us Harley Quinn. When you open the book, you see the inside of the dust jacket says face it Harl, you're a certified nutso wanted by the law in two dozen states and hopelessly in love with a murderous psychopathic clown. And that is a, that's a quote from inside of the story here. And I will say, there's one difference right there because that quote in the show only puts her in 12 states. But here, she's wanted in two dozen states. So the show calms it down a little bit and they're like, instead of 24 states, let's just make it 12. And then on the back cover, inside of the dust jacket, you've got a little explanation about who Paul Dini is, who Bruce Timm is, You've got a couple comic panels. And then on the back, it states that this book has won the Eisner Award for Best Single Story. That's pretty cool. IGN at the time said, Mad Love is everything a comic book should be. The award-winning adventures of psychotic clowns and the women who love them. So let's take off the dust cover now. I love the sleekness of this book and how cute is her face. Now just going through the comic and starting with the first page here, we've got the foreword, there's the cover. Now I will say the show starts off with him mumble, mumble, mumble. He's grumbling walking down the hallway. You don't see this, the, the receptionist saying, you're next commissioner. I don't remember that in the show at least. Um, but this is pretty, this is true to the show right here. They're in the dentist's office. There's a couple, there's, the Joker business is going on. And you know, the dentist's office was originally a scene in a different episode that I believe Bruce Timm said could have been Joker's Wild. 
So this this little scene in here, they didn't want to let the, a good scene go to waste, he said. And so instead of completely scrapping it, they wove it into the story of Mad Love. Here is the first thing I noticed, like the first major difference from comic to TV show. So we all know Mark Hamill is the Joker. He is the Joker. Like the voice is perfect. He's the Joker. So when you're watching the show, it's Mark Hamill obviously voicing the Joker. In the comic, the Joker's line is, keep flossing and watch those between meal snacks. Ha 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 ha. But in the show, his joke is, may the floss be with you. Are you kidding me? That's so awesome. And it's Mark Hamill, so it's a full circle. I love that. But that was the first big difference I noticed uh, in the comic versus the show. The next one came pretty quick. This scene right here with Batman going to the Batcave and talking to Alfred about Harley Quinn's past, this is not in the show. This part specifically, this whole little flashback of her, you know, getting a bad grade and then smooching up the professor and then she get a good grade, that is not in the show. And maybe it's specifically the smooching the professor part. I will also say they had to tone down her little negligee in these next few panels. So it's see-through, but it's not see-through. You know, you can't see any bits and pieces. So they did have to tone that down. And then the part where she says, oh, come on, Puddin', don't you want to rev up your Harley? She, that position was completely different. The position used to be there, but they said it looked too sexual. So they changed it to her like on her knees, like riding a motorcycle that way versus with, you know, what is that? The pap smear pose? Let's go with that. And what a sad love here. Like just, I mean, how sad. She just wants his attention and he's such a jerk face. What a jerk. She just keeps trying. He's going over his plans. Now this page in the comic is different from the show as well. They don't have her in hyena poop. She's clearly, that's, he clearly pushed her in duty. He, he booted her out the door and she fell right in some duty. But in the, the cartoon, it does not show that. It doesn't even show him like pulling her down the stairs by her nose. It just cuts to the back door and he kicks her out the back door, but she just like falls and like face grinds into the dirt and the hyenas are out back there, but it does not show her all covered in duty and this you she has a meltdown and that's where she says you know you're a wacko wanted in two dozen states that's what she says in the comic but in the show she says you're a wacko who's wanted in 12 states so they 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 kind of uh they loosened up her ledger a little bit here's where she meets the doctor first going into arkham she's having her own flashback here of how they met and oh boy, is he a tricky one. He tells her this story about, you know, he had an abusive dad and the only time he ever saw his dad happy was they, they had gone to the circus and his dad laughed at the goofy clowns and the pants on the clowns were dropping. And so the Joker thought, I'm going to go home and I'm going to make my dad laugh. And he put on his dad's best Sunday suit and he drops his pants and he's like whoa I'm the clown and the pants ripped and so Harley goes from oh this is such a cute little story oh the pants ripped your dad must have laughed and then Joker's like and then he broke my nose and then she starts crying and he got her she's all in she feels so bad for this story this poor Joker and she's like who could do that to somebody you know, if she's trying to diagnose and get to know Mr. J, she ends up kind of losing herself. And now she's on the therapist couch telling Mr. J what's up with her. And uh, again, like I said, he kind of knows that, that he's got her there. As always, the Joker escapes Arkham and he's out there on the run and he's doing his Joker business and Batman pop, pop, pow and brings him back to Arkham and he's all beat up. And Harley's like, oh, my poor Joker, he's all beat up. He was out there all alone on the run being scared. And she's like, you poor thing. And she snaps. She goes to a costume store and she gets all her Harley Quinn gear and some props and she beats up the costume shop owner and she leaves. And then she goes on a rampage in Arkham and she's like, hi, I'm Puddin'. And there she is, Harley Quinn.
and they make their escape. And now in the comic, this is all part of her flashback. So she's also like, as they're going through Arkham and like they're beating people up, which they don't show in the TV show. They show her busting him out and then it cuts to her coming up with a plan of how to ultimately get rid of the Batman because he's the reason why she can't get Joker's attention. And so if she gets rid of Batman, maybe her and the Joker can be together. And she starts envisioning this life with her and the Joker. And they got these crazy kids that are like trying to kill each other, right? Um, and then so she's got this idea and she's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna set this up and I'm gonna catch the Batman. And so in the TV show, it goes from her breaking Mr. J out to her coming up with this plan. But in the comic, it, it shows this flashback and this daydream also. So now she's thinking, she's like, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to like trick the, the police and the commissioner and Batman and I'm going to capture Batman. But here's what I'm going to say. I'm going to be like, the Joker's planning to like kill a bunch of people and like this has gone on far enough and she takes off her Harley Quinn gear and she's like, please, I'm gonna help you. I have all the information, but Batman, you got to come alone and you got to meet me. And Batman's like, yeah, I'll do that. And Commissioner's like, are you sure? And Batman's like, I got this. Then it cuts to Batman on the rooftop by a pier. Harley's down there. Harleen Quinzel, not Harley Quinn. She's not in her costume. And so she's hanging out down by the pier and she's got a little briefcase with some information in it. And she's like, oh, I've got this information. And then this Joker robot from the sea starts up on this boat. And he's like, nobody turns Thule on me. But it's a robot. And so Batman like throws the batarang and like chops off the Joker's robot head. And while he's distracted, Harley Quinn injects him and knocks him the f out. At this point, you're like, girl, how strong are you? Because she knocks out Batman, Batman, and she drags him to this, this spot, the Aquacade. It's like a paradise fish themed restaurant, which is actually based off of some of the places Paul Dini and Bruce Tim sat down to like talk about this book. So that's kind of cool. They would go to this restaurant that had like a tropical theme and they would hang out there and talk about this book and like try to piece this stuff together. And so they kind of based this aqua, aqua, uh, aquacade place off of the spot that they would go to. But Harley drags Batman there, ties him up upside down. And she's like, hey, this is the joke that Mr. J wanted to do, but he couldn't do it because piranhas are always frowning. But I got the bright idea to hang you upside down and you'll see them smiling. And so Batman's like, oh, yeah, brilliant. But he's not going to believe you. And she's like, yeah, he is. And he's like, mm, piranhas are going to eat me up. There's going to be like bones left. And she's like, I got your belt. And he's like, you could have taken that at any time. Joker's never going to believe you. Blah, blah, blah. And she's like, yeah, he will. He's got to trust with me. And the Batman's like, oh, what'd he tell you about the time his abusive father took him to the ice show? And Harley's like, he took him to the circus. And he's like, did he tell you the one about his alcoholic mom? And she was like, wait, what? Or, or maybe did he tell you about the one where he was a runaway orphan? And Harley's like realizing the Joker has told whatever story to whatever person just to manipulate them. And that is so true. That rings right on through to the Heath Ledger Joker. I really like that because it's like, want to know how I got these scars? And he's got like all these stories about how he got these scars. And she's like, whatever, I'll call Mr. J. So she calls Mr. J. And he's really mad that she's got Batman. At first, he's like not thinking about it. And he's like, yeah, sure. Because he was so focused on his on his plans. And he's like, yeah, okay, down by the pier. Yeah, okay, you got, you got who? Chained up, where? Gets in his car and he zooms off to go see what Harley's doing with his main man, Batman. In the TV show, they just show him getting in the car, zooming off and busting open the door. This image that we've seen a million times everywhere, Joker opening the door and he's like screaming at Harley and she's like, boop. But in the comic, on his way to Harley and Batman, he's like envisioning 
all the other villains poking fun at him. Like Two-Face and the Riddler and the Penguin and they're like, there goes the Joker, the guy whose girlfriend killed Batman. And so the Joker's like, this cannot happen. Like, I'm the one. I will do this thing. That is not in the TV show. Another thing that's not in the TV show, this is all happening while Joker's on the way to Harley and Batman. Harley has like another daydream about her and the Joker that they don't have in the show, but it's here in the comics. And here we see Harley with little babies. We see them getting married. We see them torturing people together. We see them getting old together. This poor lady, she just wants her pudding. So Joker gets there and yeah, busts through the door. There's that iconic scene. Harley! So it kind of reminds me of I Love Lucy when Ricky's like, Lucy! You got some explaining to do! But here it's Joker and Harley and only she, she, she looks scared. And so the Joker's like mad. He's like, why do you have my main man tied up? And she's like, I fixed your plan. See, it works because I hung him upside down. Now the piranhas are smiling and he's like, cool, but you got to explain it. So it's not even a joke, you dummy. He gets so mad at her for doing this for him. He pushes her out the window. And now in another difference, the show versus the book, he pushes her out this window and you see her fall down and there's like a pool of blood, man. You were like, oh my God, Harley's dead. But in the show, they got just like a little bit of blood coming out of her nose. So that's, that's one of the, that's a difference there. And here we've got Batman and the Joker and the Joker is like, so sorry about that. I'm gonna like come back. We'll do this another time. Have a nice day. You know, I'll see you later. And then he like starts to think and he's like, why don't I just shoot him? I'm just gonna shoot him. That's fine, he's here, he's tied up, I'm just gonna shoot him. Which is funny because Harley had already suggested, Joker, why don't you just shoot him? And he's like, that's so simple, there's no joke, there's no punchline, boom, it's just a shot. So he like ridiculed Harley for thinking like, just shoot him. But here he's like, I'm just gonna shoot him. But Batman, he like, he's Batman. So the Joker goes to shoot him and bop, pow, boom, bam, and he busts out because he's Batman. And he busts out all the fish. Now here where Batman busts out and him and the Joker are going at it, you see Batman like trying to break free from the chains and Joker's already running out the door. And then you see the commissioner chasing after Joker. That does not happen in the show. Batman busts out the chains, Joker runs out the door, then the whole train sequence happens. But here you've got this whole scene where the, the GCPD and Commissioner Gordon, they're all like, he went that way, and the Joker's throwing fish. You don't see any of that. You just see him cut to like jumping on the train and him and Batman have this big old fight sequence on top of this train. Boom, he gonna get him. Blam, he gonna get him. And Joker, he gets pushed into a smokestack. And then we see Harley. She survived the fall, but she is tore up from the floor. Up. The girl's in a wheelchair. She's all wrapped up. She got her arm in a sling. She's a black eye. And she's got this inner monologue going on. And she's like, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm too good for this. No more crazy. Like, F that guy. I'm here. It's cool. In the show, she just keeps talking to herself. And she's like, everything's fine. In the book, she talks to herself for a moment and then the doctor from the beginning that's like, hi, welcome, my name's Joan, blah, 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 welcome to Arkham. She comes in the room and she's like kind of shaming Harley and she's like, yeah, well, good job. You let a man like control what you do and there's no help for you. And you know there might not be because both endings, the show and the book, Harley looks over to her desk in her room, in her hospital room, and there's a single rose in a vase that says, feel better soon, J. And she's like, ball, like right, right back in it, girl. Right back in it. She was so sad, like I'm not gonna do this no more. This was messed up. And she sees that little note and she's like, oh, boo loves me. Ultimately, what a testament of being in a crazy abusive relationship. And they based this off of somebody that they knew. She wasn't in a physically abusive relationship, but the guy was like really obsessive on stuff and it was, you know, kind of toxic. And so they based this story off of a personal friend of theirs that was in a toxic relationship. And sometimes it's really hard to pull yourself up and get yourself out of that. And I feel like that's why Harley Quinn might be so likable 
it's because she's so relatable. Most of us have been there where you've dated that person and you're like, wow, this is bad. But you like make excuses for them and you're like, oh, but they love me and they're gonna change for me and they're gonna blah, blah, blah. It's so relatable. And so if you guys know anything about Harley Quinn, you know she pulls herself up by her bootstraps. She gets out there. She doesn't need him anymore. And that's the Harley Quinn. Again, I feel like people just really relate to that. But what a great story this is, ultimately. And let's look at some of the stuff in the back that I was talking about earlier. Again, this is what makes it the deluxe edition. You've got little uh, notes in the margins and stuff that tells them, you know, where to keep the color where to keep the shadows, what color the shadows should be, what color the lips and the eyes should be. It's really cool. And then they also give you some variant covers. That's actually an unused back cover by Bruce Tim. So they didn't get to use it, but they put it in here anyway. What a cover. This is the original, like whenever you got the book, I think this is the original one. But this one is cool. And the little thing up here says, for the Flash's 75th anniversary, DC Comics did a series of variant covers where the Flash ran through some of the most iconic covers in DC history. Bruce Timm revisited the original Mad Love cover for the event. And so they've got the Flash running through it and you know, they're all like flipped up and you know, looking a lot different from the original cover. So that's really cool. I like that they included that variant in there. Well, that's my review of Mad Love. Personally, if you're a fan of Joker, Harley Quinn, or Batman, which those are like my top three, but this is a must have for your collection. It's a great story. It's the origin of, of Harley Quinn and it's phenomenal. If you enjoyed this week's video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos every Sunday. And until next week, just keep on marching to the beat of your own drum. Peace.